Hello everyone, this is Shannon from That So Po, and today I'm doing week five of my 2022 reads. This week I ended up picking up a bunch of stuff that was a little bit more emotionally heavy. Some of them really worked for me and some of them I DNF'd. Timestamps and content warnings are in the description box below. The first book that I finished was March Book One by John Lewis and Andrew Aiden, illustrated by Nate Powell. This is the first book in a trilogy that is kind of a memoir of John Lewis getting into the civil rights activism movement um, in the 60s. So this first book is really reflecting back on his childhood and his college years and sort of how he got involved in the civil rights movement and got kind of passionate about um, peaceful protest and nonviolence and really fighting for equal rights. And it's kind of framed around the modern day um, and the Obama inauguration. So it's just like a really, really well done memoir. I'm very much looking forward to reading the subsequent books in this series. And I just love graphic memoirs. Um, I thought that the illustration style was really neat. And I thought that it was really neat to see his kind of childhood and what influenced him and what he went through to become engaged and become interested in the nonviolence movement. So all of that was really, really cool. Definitely recommend this. I gave it five out of five stars. Next, I read The Memory Theater by Karen Tidbeck. This is a book that I'd been meaning to get to for a while, but Kristen at Kristen L. SFF Reader did a video recently, I'll link it below, talking about kind of books that you shouldn't miss um, before nominating for the Hugos. And this was on her list for the novels. And I was like, you know what, I really should get to this. Um, and it was really, really beautifully written. So this is sort of a, a little bit of a historical fantasy, but it's really a dark fairy tale type of feel. Um, we follow a couple of kids who are in this sort of dark fairy land um, with very uh, capricious and malevolent fairies who are incredibly powerful and very much um, just concerned with their own pleasures and very brutal in the way that they treat others. And so these two kids are trying to escape that and get back into the real world. Um, so they go on this journey of trying to, to escape those fairies, get to the real world and kind of find themselves. Um, this has incredibly gorgeous writing. It's really atmospheric, very creepy, um, beautiful, very derelict type of setting and great magic. So I loved the atmosphere in this. I also thought that the theming in this was really, really interesting. Um, definitely though, some content warnings. Check those out. They are in the description box below because one of the big themes in this is abuse and kind of surviving abuse. And there's quite a bit of graphic abuse in this and a lot of just graphic violence in general um, and, and a lot of sadness. So it was kind of a heavy book and I think a little bit too graphically violent for me, but it was so beautifully written and just so immersive and I liked the themes quite a bit. So I still gave it four out of five stars. Then I picked up another book, which was kind of heavy, which was The Annual Migration of Clouds by Premi Mohammed. So this is a dystopian future that is focusing on some kind of ecological collapse on Earth. And we follow some people who are struggling to survive in a little bit of a, a commune. Um, and in particular, one girl, a teenage girl, who has received an acceptance letter to a university in kind of one of the few cities that survived the kind of collapse of the world. Um, but nobody really has ever been there. Nobody really knows if it exists. And she's trying to figure out if she should accept the invitation to go to this university, if it's at all even real, um, and what to do, especially because both she and her mother have um, basically the chronic illness and leaving her mother alone is very much a, a hard thing to do. Um, there's a lot of very complicated relationships in this, a lot of exploration of, of really inner turmoil, but also bigger societal issues of, of power and what would happen if there was an ecological collapse and uh, who would kind of benefit from it, who would really suffer from it, and, and how people would get by. So really, really great themes in this. Uh, also beautiful writing and great atmosphere, but again, 
really heavy emotionally and there's quite a lot of content issues in here that are are heavy things like a lot of suicidal ideation and also a lot of graphic violence and gore um it's a brutal kind of future so i thought that even though it had so much kind of graphic violence in it i just thought the themes were so interesting and this character who is really struggling to figure out what's the right thing to do for herself, for her opportunities, for her future, but also for what she owes to her community and to her mom and to her friends. And just that feeling of being torn between staying or going, I thought it was such a great exploration of that. So I gave it four and a half out of five stars. And then I did have a couple of DNFs this week, starting with I'm Waiting For You by Kim Bo Young, translated from Korean by Sophie Bowman and Sung Ryu. I buddy read this with Kristen at Kristen L SFF Reader, who I will link below. Um, and we had a lot of discussions on this. I think that this collection of translated science fiction short stories is really good if you like kind of philosophical discussions. These were incredibly philosophical questions that were explored in these stories. Um, and I think that the writing style also was pretty beautiful, like very atmospheric and very immersive and uh, just very contemplative in its feel. But there were a lot of things that also didn't quite work for me in this collection. So first of all, it's not exactly a collection of short stories. It's more like two stories, and each of these stories has a couple of stories within that. So one of the stories is two novelettes. Um, so there's a novelette at the beginning of the collection and at the end of the collection, and it is told from one perspective in the first half and then another perspective in the other half. And then the other story is a novella and then a short story that follows it set kind of after the novella ends. So it's four stories total, but really it's it's only two stories actually. Um, and I kind of struggled with both stories, which is why I ended up DNFing it halfway through and not continuing. But I do think that there were a lot of really good things and I think it could work for many different readers. It just didn't end up working for me. So the first story is basically about a couple, um, a, a man and a woman who decide that they're gonna get married, but the woman has to travel across um, the universe a bit to go handle some family things and that means that she's gonna be away from Earth for something like eight or ten years um, and so her fiance decides that he's gonna do a little bit of space travel himself so that they're both in space and time is gonna pass similar amounts of time for each of them rather than him you know waiting for that her that entire time but some stuff goes wrong with their ships and then they keep trying to sync up with each other in time and there's some great themes in it about really displacement in time and in place and about trying to connect and some great ecological um, themes as well so really cool themes really cool discussions but i was not on board with the romance i did not think that any of the decisions that the characters made were good and i just got thoroughly annoyed with the story because i think it was portraying it as a great romance and and for me i just thought that the characters were really selfish and i did not buy into it and then the other story um, has this uh, world where where basically there's these godlike beings, um, and Earth itself is a school for them. So they basically reincarnate themselves multiple times on Earth to learn lessons and to grow. Uh, and this one was filled with great philosophical discussions. I thought it was really, really interesting, but it dragged on forever. So I only got partway through this novella because I was just so bored. It was so drawn out. I felt like the ideas in this novella could have been done in a short story and it would have been perfection, but it was just really, really drawn out and very slow moving and very abstract and very philosophical with a lot of repetition of the ideas that they were exploring. And I just got incredibly bored. So, and then I wasn't interested in reading the kind of short story that came after it that was about it. So yeah. So this collection has some really good things about it, but it just didn't end up being for me. And then the other book that I DNF this week was The Fastest Way to Fall by Denise Williams, which I was so surprised to DNF because I had really enjoyed Williams' previous book, How to Fail at Flirting, and Cynthia at Book Whimsy did a great review for this book, so I will link that below. So I was really excited to read it, and yet I, I just struggled with this book. And I think part of it was because it was a rather kind of emotionally heavy and anxiety-inducing book, and I think I 
just really wasn't able to handle that on top of all of the other kind of heavy reading that I was doing this week. So could have just been a bad time, but it just didn't end up working out for me. I got through 49% uh, and then I DNF'd it. So the basic storyline is that we follow a woman who is working at a lifestyle kind of magazine and she's looking to really boost herself in terms of her career and get more work, not just doing kind of editorial assistant stuff, but more writing her own things. And so she comes up with an idea to sort of uh, write a series of blog posts about using a fitness app. Um, and so she decides to do that and she ends up signing up for this app and connecting really closely with her coach, who she doesn't know happens to actually be the CEO of this startup fitness app. And he is somebody who's like really, really into fitness and coaching and helping people kind of connect with their bodies and figure out like what works for them. So they kind of start flirting as they're going along on this journey, um, but they really don't know the sort of issues that the other is having professionally, ethically with what's going on, but they're both very attracted to each other. So that's kind of the basic premise of the story. And that was interesting. I thought that was definitely interesting. I think the writing is good, but it was so emotionally heavy and anxiety inducing because both of these characters have so much anxiety that they're dealing with. Um, and it just comes out in every interaction, especially because they have this secret where they can't exactly explain to each other what they're doing in this connection with each other professionally. Um, and so they each sort of want to broach the topic of liking each other, but they constantly back off and they're constantly just in this anxiety loop. And it was so stressful for me. There's also quite a bit of heavy stuff in terms of the guy's mom is alcoholic and a drug user, and he's really, really struggling with that. And there's just so much heaviness in this emotionally, as well as um, the, the woman is fat and she is dealing with a lot of pressure that she feels from other people, even though she likes her body, she's feeling a lot of pressure from other people. And sometimes she makes really poor choices in terms of like over-exercising, things like that. Uh, so yeah, it was just kind of too heavy for me and too anxiety inducing, and I just wasn't able to handle it. But I, I think that the writing is good. And if you're interested in a romance novel that tackles some interesting issues, definitely check out Cynthia's review and maybe give this one a try. Okay, so that's everything that I read and DNF this week. If you guys have read any of these or if you're interested in reading them, if you have any thoughts, anything you want to chat with me about, just leave me a comment down below.